All right, let's uh, connect then with Lawrence Balanco, who's joining in. He's technical analyst at CLSA to flag off levels on the global markets as well as back home. Lawrence, good to have you on board. Thanks so much Morning. for joining in. Just let's get in a view as to what exactly it is you believe that the biggest risk is right now to the markets because you have spoken about how the S&P 500s break below the June lows and the uh, second is a non-confirmation. So what is your outlook in terms of where... Uh, those markets are headed. Yeah, so it's quite interesting. You know, there's four uh, points that we'd make on the S&P, at least uh, on a tactical basis, while we think we get a, a relief rally in the ongoing uh, bear market setup. And the first one is if you look at Russell 2000, so the small cap index has not confirmed the S&P or the NASDAQ 100's uh, lows that it's made through the month of September and October. So you've got that inter-market divergence. Uh, if you look at the momentum indicators between the lows set up in September and October, you've got slowing downside momentum. Uh, if we look at the sentiment indicators from the American Association of Individual Investors to the daily sentiment indicators, we've been at uh, sentiment extremes, which historically have generated positive returns on a 90-day basis, 70% uh, of the time for both S&P and NASDAQ. And then the final point that we would make is, you know, seasonals for the majority of global indices start to turn positive here through the uh, fourth quarter. So our base case uh, on the tactical setup is that we're forming a short-term tradable low uh, for both NASDAQ and S&P that sees those markets recover back to their 200-day moving average. So roughly 4,100 uh, for the S&P and, and 13,000 uh, 13, for, for the NASDAQ 100. So a tactical bounce within their ongoing downtrends. Lawrence, I'm morning. You know, what I want to really talk about is uh, what we're seeing with the dollar because, you know, this dollar index recent drop to about 113 despite hawkish Fed bets and, you know, the cautious uh, uh, optimism which seems to be currently in play right now and the kind of havoc that it's really creating for, uh, you know, um, currencies across the world and thereby equity markets as well. Just wanted to understand where you see uh, the dollar headed next. Yes, yeah, so remember that dollar index is 57% uh, weighted uh, in the euro and, and then that's followed by 13% in the yen. So those are the sort of two big currencies. But if we just focus in on the US dollar, so DXY price action, the 50 days has been the key support area uh, since the, the lows that we set up in 2011. That comes through at around the 110 area currently. But what we have been flagging in our, our work recently is the rate of change on a weekly basis has slowed on the dollar index. So we do think the uptrend uh, is maturing uh, and a break below one being the 50 day moving average would reinforce at least a, another top for the dollar and a pullback to the 103 area. And that's another factor why we think we can get this relief rally that the dollar starts to stall out here uh, and it will be confirmed with a break below the 50 day at 110. Lawrence, hi, this is Anisha also joining and you mentioned in the opening chat that perhaps there's a short term trading bottom which has been formed at least for the US markets but would you say it's a similar view for India as well because we haven't fallen that much in context of what's happening across the globe. So how are you looking at the Indian markets at the moment? Yeah, I mean the Indian market's been quite resilient. I mean if you look at it uh, in local currency terms, uh, we're just off the all time highs and if you look at it in dollar terms, uh, using the MSCI India US dollar term uh, indices versus the S&P, you know, India's outperformed year to date, the, the S&P by roughly 15%. So we've actually got a totally different chart structure, a more resilient chart structure. And basically the Nifty has been in a trading range uh, between 15,200 and 8,200 a year to date. And, you know, with a relief rally uh, in the US market, we can see the Nifty retesting that 18,200 area and potentially breaking out of this range. Now, a successful breakout from this range will give us two targets, an initial target around the 20,000 area, but the longer term target of uh, 21,400. Uh, so it has been resilient. It has been an outperformer year to date. But in the near term, it looks like we at least get a test of the 18,200 area. So 18,200 over what time period, Lawrence? So, sorry, just repeat the question. So you said 18,200 can be tested. I'm asking what's the time period that you mentioned? All right. I mean, so the, the 18,200, we think we, we can do that uh, into November. So in a very short term, we can trade up to that 18,200 area. You just gave us your, our next headline, Lawrence, and I'm now tempted to ask what's going to leave, uh, lead the uh, Nifty 50 onto that mark. Uh, seems like it's going to be banks. They are really doing a magic trick. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it's been a sector that we've highlighted uh, continuously as, as the long-term leadership uh, for India, and it's really sort of come to the fore uh, over the past six months, and, and we don't really see that changing. Um, so, yeah, Indian banks would, would be the standout. Uh, we started to see some improving price action in the pharmaceutical space, which has, ha has been an underperformer. So we've seen a bit of rotation, and what we would be highlighting is the Indian autos, uh, which have had a great run-up uh, in the first half of this year. We're starting to see some slowing upside momentum. So actually, we'll be taking some profits in the Indian uh, auto names and switching into the farmers, which have been an underperformer. Uh, but the key sector to be overweight remains the Indian banks. Okay, Indian banks remain the key overweight sector. But Lawrence, if I had to ask you, 18,200 by November, when can we see that 20,000 magic level uh, on the Nifty? Would you be able to give us a timeline on that as well? But, I mean, to get up to that 21,000 area, we'd, we'd have to have a, a, a more conclusive uh, use of conditions in global markets. And that would have to sort of coincide with US recapturing their 200-day moving average. But that 21,000 target is based on the trading range that we've seen the Nifty trade in uh, year to date. So it's the trading range that sets the platform or the foundation for that next breakout leg, uh, which gives us a 21,400 target. So that, that longer term target is uh, more reliant on, on a more stable uh, global picture, in particular US uh, recapturing the 200 day moving average. The, the, the Nifty can stay in this current trading range. And as I said earlier, we can continue to outperform the US markets, uh, even in dollar terms, as you've seen, Nifty outperform by roughly 50%, 15% year to date. At the same time, uh, Lawrence, what I also want to understand is what is the biggest risk, according to you, um, that you foresee right now? Is all the negative in the price because, you know, the street still seems pretty divided on whether the U.S. is headed for a recession or not, what the Fed is going to do next on rates and then the repercussion, of course, in equity markets thereby? Yep. So, so from a chart basics, the, the key uh, macro market we're looking at is credit spreads. Uh, what we've seen historically is when we see those credit spreads accelerate, the markets globally become vulnerable to a liquidity events, which typically creates a delta one environment. And what I mean by that is that everything falls together. There's no real opportunities for rotation or outperformance like you've seen from India this year. So the, the key um, credit spread that we, we track is the bar cap uh, US corporate high yield minus US 10 year yield. Uh, and the, the level that we're monitoring closely is the 600 to 613 basis points area. Uh, as long as those credit spreads remain below that level, uh, we think we can continue to see this rotation, uh, rotational price action that we've seen uh, in markets, and, and that will give uh, the Nifty at least that opportunity to trade up to that uh, 18,200 area. But if credit spreads had to blow through 1,600 basis points, you know, there's a risk that we do see a liquidity event that, that gets markets selling off in, in unison and no option to do any rotation. If I had to ask you, which are your top two, three trades at the moment globally across asset classes? What would that be? Long dollar, long bonds. Um, what's the top two, three tactical trades that you're looking at? Yeah, so you know, looking into year end, we do think that Nasdaq does outperform in this uh, seasonal rally. So we, we think that trades back to thirteen thousand. So it gives you slightly better reward than uh, on the on the S and P side. Uh, at the same time, we think the yen can pull back from current levels, looking for a pullback towards the 140 area. Uh, and the final ingredient to, to put into that is that the 10-year yield has to stay capped uh, at the 4% area, and that would make the US T-note a, a trading bar here also for recovery uh, in this fourth quarter rebound. Lawrence, I'm tempted to ask you what happens to, uh, you know, the NASDAQ? What is it that you foresee? charts because you know it's come out of a painful period right now of course we're seeing you know an in sync move up and uh, so is the case sporadically with Indian IT as well but just purely because of the sentimental rub, rub off that any crash on Nasdaq has on Indian IT and the kind of sentiment right now which is prevalent wanted to understand what you foresee for not just Indian IT but global IT stocks as well yeah look I, I think the longer term conclusion that this is just a relief rally, a bear market rally rather than the ultimate low for the NASDAQ. So it's a tactical trade back to 13,000, uh, but that's where we see the biggest upside for that tactical level. Um, in the first half of uh, 2023, we do expect to see uh, a rebreak of the June and September lows that we, we're trying to base out at currently. 
Um, so again, this is a rebound within an ongoing downtrend is the conclusion that I'd see. And I think the Indian IT stocks, after forming pretty significant peaks in the first half of this year, again, be limited to a rebound back to those breakdown areas uh, before the downtrend uh, resumes. Okay, Lauren, so it's a bear market rally and not a sustainable up move, at least in the near term, we're not out of the woods, that's the word coming in for NASDAQ. But I was uh, reading your earlier comments on the commodity cycle as well, wherein you talk about how um, it might be a long term commodity cycle, bull, uh, bull cycle that we might be into. Do you want to talk to us a bit more about that? Where do you see crude headed? Where is Where are we in the commodity cycle at the moment? Yeah, I mean, I think if you really take a step back and there's a chart that uh, we've created uh, looking at commodity prices going back over 100 years, it's a nominal uh, chart, uh, price chart that we look at. And, and basically what we can observe uh, on that price action is this 30-year uh, cycle in commodities, which generally breaks down into three parts of a 10-year bear market, 10-year repair process, and, and a 10-year bull market. And, and the point is, you know, the, the price actually we've seen over the past 12 months may look extreme on a short-term basis. It looks like it essentially is the kick or fail of a, of a multi-year uptrend within the broader commodity uh, complex. As far as Brent goes, you know, we think we're in a higher range uh, and consolidating in that range. And, and the bottom end of that range is the $85 to $88 area. And the upper boundary of that range is towards $123, $125. So, so those, uh, and that's the levels and range that we think Brent trades in uh, into 2023. Okay, so over $120 for the crude and that's something that you see for 2023 as well. Just wanted to scratch a bit more about uh, the IT stocks that we just discussed. Uh, you talked about how banking remains a pillar of strength when it comes to the Indian markets. What happens to IT? Because that's been quite weak so far. Um, do you have any sort of sense in terms of uh, Nifty IT um, and the entire pack? Yeah, so again, the short-term setup for Nifty RT is to trade back towards 31,200, 31,300, which is roughly where the 200-day sits in, and, and that would kind of with the NASDAQ uh, running back to 13,000. But that's likely where the rallies uh, is expected to stall and resume the downtrend, because if you look at the longer-term setup, you know, the, the impressive bull run that you had from 2020 topped out in a classic uh, head and shoulders topping formation through 2021. So we think the rebound, again, is part of this ongoing downtrend that the Nifty IT sector is creating, which gives you a short-term upside target of 31,200 to 31,300. But ultimately, we roll over and we break below 26,200 uh, into 2023. Lawrence, uh I'm not sure how micro you're delving into India markets, but we are seeing emergence. A lot of newer sectors take place. Uh, defense, for instance, you know, uh, if I bring up any chart here, they're all sitting at life highs for him, for themselves. In the year gone by, underperformers like ITC have made a very solid comeback. Within autos as well, we are seeing newer names now stand at 52-week highs. Sporadically, you're seeing within pharmaceuticals as well, you know, while it's a very divergent sector, uh, but you are seeing some of the stocks sit at life highs. I wanted to understand outside of the pockets of IT and banks, where is it that you're scouting for opportunities when it comes to India and looking at attractive charts? Well, like I said earlier, the, the, the most interesting uh, place that's developed in the short term has been the broader pharmaceutical space from, from the drug producers to the hospital names uh, where we've seen fresh breakouts. So if you're looking for sort of fresh ideas, we're, we're really sort of looking in the pharmaceutical space uh, right now. Having underperformed for uh, the greater part of this year, we're starting to see some leadership de develop from there and breakouts of trading range that vary from three to 12 months. So, so that's a space that we'd look at uh, for, for new opportunities. Lawrence, um, what about China? It's been beaten down quite a bit. The Hong so, uh, Hang Seng Tech Index has seen quite a bit of correction this year as well. Is it uh, fair to completely write off that geography or do you think it can be in for a very sharp rebound as well as things open up, as the headlines keep coming in from the Chinese Congress as well? Well, I mean, I think it's the, it's probably the biggest pain trade into your end because it is under-owned uh, and no one really wants to get involved there. So, you know, we've been looking at the Hong Kong short-selling turnover versus total turnover. 
uh, and the short selling turnover is sitting at roughly 18% this year versus 13% last year. And this is in an environment that total volume in the markets dropped by 26%. So, you know, any kind of positive news we think can trigger quite a violent uh, short squeeze that, that we can see the market rally uh, quite sharply uh, into year end. And uh, what could exacerbate that is all the underweight positions that we do have uh, in emerging markets that, that land up uh, chasing that market higher. The other interesting uh, observation would be that the Hang Seng Tech Index, while it's been weak since June, it hasn't made a new low below the March 22 lows uh, versus the NASDAQ, which has made fresh lows for its downtrend of the, the January high. So there, there has been a development of divergence between the Hang Seng Tech Index and the NASDAQ for, for, for that matter. So there are some uh, warning signs that we shouldn't be really chasing uh, the Hong Kong market lower at this point. And, and there is a great risk of a, a sharp uh, short covering rally uh, into your end. Thank you so much for taking time out and giving us those views, Lawrence. So that's